Hello, I'm Jamie and I'm joined for this short video by Katie from our Wildlife Inquiries team. Hello. And in this very short video, we are going to be looking at some of the most common questions we get asked every single July. And the first one of these tends to be about insects, um, which you perhaps wouldn't expect, but insects are a, a group of animals that people are going to be seeing a lot of in high summer, aren't they, Katie? Yeah, absolutely. And every year, many people are quite taken aback uh, by a specific one, which um, they seem to think it looks a bit like a hummingbird. So this is, in fact, a species of moth. So they're unlike many species, they're actually day flying. So this means that, the, you know, they're very often seen, you know, out in the sun, they, they prefer the warmer weathers. Um, and this is a hummingbird hawk moth. Um, they breed regularly here in the UK and can be found across the British Isles. Um, there are records in every county, even going straight up north to Orkney and Shetland. Throughout July and August, keep your eyes peeled for their larvae among their favourite food of bed straw and wild madder. They are absolutely stunning insects, aren't they? And I've seen them uh, both in my garden, but also up at RSPB HQ at the lodge on things like verbena and red valerian. And at first glance, you really do think they're hummingbirds. So yeah, do look out for those absolutely extraordinary. But there's something a little bit more common, isn't there, that people often call us about and ask us about. Yeah, absolutely. Every year at the end of July, a lot of people may see a swarm of birds high up in the skies feeding. And these are actually because of flying ants. So these insects appear every year, usually at the end, last weekend of July. And it's basically the birds taking full advantage of their emergence. These are ants are males and young queens who are seeking other ants to mate with from other colonies. So appearing in these huge numbers, but in a short space of time, actually increases their chance of reproducing, which is when this queen will also seek out a new nest. So these ants are completely harmless. They hang around for a few weeks, even after their wings drop off. And you said at the beginning there about different um, birds taking advantage. And actually all sorts of birds will feed on them, won't they? Like uh, gulls will even uh, make the most of this bounty. Yeah, absolutely. Herring gulls, which people won't necessarily think feed on it, this kind of, kind of food source. You know, your swifts, house martins, swallows, you will see a great number of birds feeding upon this spectacle and it is wonderful to watch. Talking of gulls, this is the time of year when people are indeed talking of gulls um, because we are going out to the coasts um, and at pretty much the same time, a lot of these birds are, um, their, their chicks have left the nest. They're trying to feed them, trying to defend them. Um, and not just on the coast, of course, in, in lots of towns and cities too. How can we best get on with our seagull or land gull or any kind of gull neighbours? Yeah, absolutely. So the species most likely to come into conflict with people are the herring gulls. So despite what seems to be huge numbers within coastal towns and cities, there has actually been in fact a 50% decline in their numbers since the 70s. So this has led to them becoming actually a vulnerable species. So understanding you know, the, the birds themselves um, and that they are indeed just very protective parents. So since about the 1940s, they've adapted to ever-changing landscapes, to additions of houses onto coastlines. And to them, from their perspective, a flat roof or a chimney stack is an ideal and safe place to have their young. But as you say, this can unfortunately lead them into conflict with people. Being such fantastic parents, they will protect their young as best they can by sounding alarm calls, which can become a bit of a cacophony, um, and dive bombing as well. So given their competitive nature, they will fight each other for food, often resulting in them snatching food from people who are, as you say, out enjoying the sunshine. But to them, a dropped chip or one in your hand is no different. And it was indeed a throwaway society in our history that resulted in them learning the presence of humans means more food. You know, we never advise them to be fed voluntarily, but they are, as they are incredibly resourceful and smart, they can find plenty of food on their own. But unfortunately, they can be dive bombing and very <laughs> confident around people. But we advise just to protect yourself with something like an umbrella. Um, and they will eventually leave you alone. I'm just looking to see our next question because it's a, it's, an, it's a curious one because it's a bird that we're very familiar with, the blackbird, but people do call us about this, don't they? What was people asking about blackbirds in July? So in July, it's actually 
why are blackbirds still quite aggressive? A lot of people think the breeding season has come to an end in July, but in fact, blackbirds are one of the species that will nest quite late on into the summer. They can have up to four broods given the time of year, if they've had a successful year with food. So yeah, they will definitely hold their nesting territory right, right up until the end of July and they will defend it well. So it's, it's incredibly hard work for both the male and females to feed around the clock when the chicks hatch. When they're ready to fledge, it's the male who will be left to care for them whilst the female nestles down for another clutch. So this heightens the protective instinct for the male. You'll see him kind of chasing away other species, but definitely other males as well. And he will also sing at the top of his lungs still right into July. And that's really interesting because if they've got up to four broods, four lots of chicks, then there's going to be a lot of juvenile blackbirds hanging around that presumably the parents are going to have to push out of their territory, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. Their focus has definitely switched to the youngest and the newest clutch. So, you know, um, from incubating to fledging, it's about 28 days for blackbirds. So it's a very short amount of time is spent in the nest. You know, they, they, they fledge after just 14 days. So they're incredible birds and, and ones that have really done well, especially within our gardens. So if you have any climbers or hedges, please just wait until at least September to give these birds a chance. Katie, thank you very much for answering all those questions and thanks everyone for watching. Thank you.